Hi everyone, this is Sarah with MyNaturalBabyBirth.com and today we are talking about late pregnancy symptoms that you have before you go into labor. There's eight of them that I'm going to share with you today and they can help guide you to sort of predicting when that baby is going to come and how close you are to going into labor. All of these symptoms you want to keep track of. But first, if you're new to me, and the blog, go to mynaturalbabybirth.com slash resource guide, and I have a free little ebook guide for you that you can download right there that has my five top essential resources for your natural birth that you're gonna love, totally free, and so go ahead and check that out. Okay, number one symptom, I'm gonna kinda do these in order, like time progression-wise, and this is the, the natural order that you're gonna see these happening to you in your last month or one to last one to two months before pregnancy all the way up to active labor. And let me remind you, you may not have all of these symptoms. You may have every single one. You, it's kind of, it's different for every mom, but we'll go through that a little bit. Okay, the number, <coughs> Excuse me, the first thing you want to watch out for uh, that's a sign of imminent labor is your baby's going to turn. Of course, as they're growing, they're flopping all around and you can feel their feet up here or down there and the, oh my heck, they flipped over and their front ways are backwards. Towards the end, they are 90% of the time most likely going to turn. They're going to be head down, getting nestled all snug. Uh, ready to come out, which is great. This usually happens between 30 to 34 weeks along in your pregnancy. That's kind of the typical average time, but your baby can turn while you're in labor. It happens. So if you're worried about breach uh, or other issues like that, you can certainly bring them up with your provider, but know that they will turn even until the last minute. They can turn so keep an eye out for that okay then the second symptom or sign you're gonna have after that baby turns is your baby's gonna drop and you're not even gonna be able to tell the difference you're gonna have a friend or a co-worker tell you one day they're gonna look at you from the side and say your belly is a lot lower than it used to be because you've dropped your baby after they turn they literally sink down into the bottom of your pelvis as far as they can go and <laughs> and from the side, if you took a before and after picture, it's like wah, wah, totally. And you can't even really tell because you look down and it's just all there. But check it in the mirror and you'll be able to tell the difference. And this usually happens one to four weeks before you go into labor. And it's, it's actually kind of great because it helps you breathe a little bit better. That pressure off of your lungs is kind of gone because they're sinking down. But your bladder is squished even more. So... Of course, we hate that because you have to pee all the time. Anyway, but that's okay. Great. The third sign is that you can have just cramps. Now, and these aren't these aren't like period cramps or contraction cramps. These are just discomfortable pelvic cramps. You know, a twinge here, a pull there, front or back. You know, you move a little funny. Oh, I got a cramp. That starts to happen towards the end and really it's just it's your muscles and tissues aligning and settling and getting ready and this is a really a less common symptom you may or may not have it no big deal but number four symptom to look out for is contractions and there's so many different types of contractions and until you've experienced all of them is really the easiest way to tell them apart, but this is the best way to tell them apart. Braxton Hicks contractions, you've likely had them since you've been four months along, and Braxton Hicks contractions are more like your uterus just going hard. It like it it solidifies and goes hard and tightens, and it's to me it felt like a bowling ball was just stuck underneath your skin and your belly. And towards the end of your pregnancy, those Braxton, Hick, Braxton Hicks contractions can be just stronger and tighter, more frequent. They're not painful necessarily, but you'll just notice them a lot more. And this may or may not lie, may or may not happen. 
Okay, the second type of contractions you may see are the more crampy kind that are like period cramps where you have like a wave and swelling of period cramps. I'm gonna get a drink, hang on just a second. Thank you. So, but the crampy contraction-like cramps are they're actually, they're really down low and more down towards your, your cervix and your lower, lower belly. And they are much more like a period. And they're not just the little twingy cramps that you can have from being uncomfortable. They're more like a period, which sucks. But that's okay. Those are a little less common too. But, you know, you can have all of these and none of these. We kind of talked about that. And then the other type of contractions you may have are false contractions or false labor, also known as padromal labor. And these are much different than Braxton Hicks or just cramps. False labor, you can have in the front or the back. They can start on one side of your uterus and kind of like roll around to the other side. They can be down really low by your cervix and you think you're in labor because they're more painful and more annoying but they're not consistent they don't necessarily get stronger at all if you get up and walk and move around or eat they're gonna go away and i've only had uh, false labor contractions once with all my with three of my kids so I didn't know the difference until I had them. I thought I was in labor first time I had them. But as soon as I got up and moved around, I realized, oh my heck, these are false. This sucks. And they went on for about a week. Yeah, no fun. So the fourth symptom that you're watching out for are the different types of contractions. Braxton Hicks, crampy period cramps, contractions, or fault mm, three, false labor contractions. And these happen in the last month of your pregnancy. Okay, the fifth uh, symptom you wanna watch out for is dilation and effacement. And this you can't feel necessarily. The only way to know that this is happening is having your doctor or midwife check you. Stick their fingers up there and they check you. They feel, they take an estimate, and they can tell you, oh yeah, okay, you're, you're one centimeter dilated, which is like that much or you're effaced, which is where your, your cervix thins out. Because your cervix naturally is like this thick. It's like an inch thick. But when it effaces before labor, it gets really thin. Like, like a little flappy membrane, like paper thin. And so when you're 100% effaced, that's completely flattened. And the dilation is when your cervix actually opens. Because it's, it's, it's closed like this, but then when you're dilating, it opens up to 10 centimeters, which is about that far. And these happen, you can start dilating and effacing up to a month before. You can have no dilation whatsoever the day of your labor. But most likely, that's, that's why it's so funny because most mothers think, okay, Oh, I'm dilating, you know, I'm, I'm at two centimeters, you know, I could have this baby any moment. And that's true, you could, but you could be pregnant for three more weeks. I knew, my, my neighbor across the street, she told me that she was dilated at four centimeters, which is typically the point when you go into active labor. She was dilated at four centimeters for three weeks. Three weeks, and I felt so bad for her. So it's a really good guide to most likely predict, okay, I'm dilated this much and effaced almost completely. I'm gonna go into labor pretty soon, pretty soon. It's, it's a really good estimate, but also know that you can have, like I said, no dilation whatsoever and you have your baby the next day. You can be pretty far along and have them in three weeks. It just happens. Okay. The next symptom, number six, is that what we're on? Yeah. Six is losing your mucus plug. And uh, when your, your cervix starts to open up, it lets go of this mucus plug that kind of coats it and protects it. It doesn't need any semen to come in anymore. So you've got this mucus plug 
that when it's no longer needed and your cervix starts to, oh, to dilate, it just lets go. And it's really just a big ball of goo, you know, uh, like, a, like your regular discharge you get, but just a bigger wad. And you may notice losing it. You may not at all. I have never noticed losing my mucus plug ever. Some women notice very distinctly. They can be like a clear color, slightly yellowish, a little bloody. It's sometimes called bloody show for that reason. It can be slightly brown. It's, it's just discharge, you know, and you're so used to discharge, right? And you're, uh, you're going to lose your mu mucus plug within a week uh, before you go into labor. So you could have it the day of, a week before, it all just depends. And you may or may not notice it. For me, it's been no big deal because I've never noticed it, but that's okay. You might have a big moment where, oh my heck, I lost my mucus plug, yay! Okay, number seven, late pregnancy symptom before you go into labor is diarrhea and bowel movements. When, and when you are about to get things moving, your body is most likely gonna release everything that it possibly can to make room for movement. So this usually happens a few hours before you go into labor and even into your active labor. For me, I always have it, I always have diarrhea and have to go to the bathroom right at the very beginning of my of active labor, when I know that I'm in labor. And it's actually kind of great because even though you may go a couple times, your body is releasing all of that and you don't have to worry usually about it coming out while you're on a birthing table. And it makes more room for the baby because it literally has to squish your bladder out and squish your colon out of the way for him to come down. And so releasing any stool or bowel movements that you have is actually like a really distinct sign that you are in labor or you're gonna start pretty dang quick, which is awesome. Okay, and then the eighth symptom you wanna watch out for is your water breaking. Now, I know that this is always the big thing. Oh, my water broke, my water broke, I'm gonna go to labor. And it's really, <sighs> your water breaking can happen a couple, you know, 24 to 36 hours before you go into labor. Hopefully that won't happen to you, but you may even go all the way through labor and your water never breaks. Some babies that are born, it can be born inside of your amniotic sac because it never broke. It totally happens. It's actually really amazing. So it's one of those things where it's not a distinct sign of, oh, I'm in labor, uh, or oh, I'm gonna start labor right away, or because it may not even happen. However, it's, it's most commonly your water, and your sac will break most commonly towards the end of your active labor and into your transitional labor. I've, uh, the only time that my water actively broke was with my third baby and it was during transition. Or no, I had transitioned really quickly and then right before I started bearing down, my water broke. So right before my baby started to descend, my water broke. So to me, it's never been a whoop de doo signal that I'm gonna be in labor. However, you may have it right beforehand. So it's one of those things to keep in mind. Okay, great. While you are in the midst of laboring, let me share this awesome resource with you. Have you ever used a squatty potty? They are so helpful, especially when you're pregnant because when you're on the john, you can line up your pelvis and your internal organs better for releasing whatever you need to release. So if you go to mynaturalbabybirth.com slash squatty potty, S-Q-U-A-T-T-Y-P-O-T-T-Y, you can check that out. I have one, I use it every day. Wish I'd had it decades, <laughs> a long time ago. So, okay, that's all of the late pregnancy symptoms you wanna make sure you know so that you can kind of gauge how soon your baby's gonna be coming, when your labor's gonna start, and let's go through them one more time really quickly. 
your baby turning is the first one, turning head down. Second is your baby going to drop. Your belly is going to drop. They're going to settle down into your pelvis. The third one is just kind of miscellaneous, uncomfortable cramps you can have in your pelvic region in your belly. The fourth one is an assortment of contractions that you may have, which were Braxton Hicks, uh, crampy period-like cramps, and then uh, false labor, uh, which does not get stronger or closer together. All sorts of lame contractions. Number five was dilating and effacing. Your doctor has to check you for this, so you can't know unless, unless they check you. And number six was losing your mucus plug. Number seven was having diarrhea. And number eight is your water breaking. Too much to remember, right? That's why I put this video together for you. And you stayed clear to the end, which is awesome. Now I know that you're gonna know everything you need to know before you go into labor. So you are confident in thinking and knowing when your labor may or may not start. Knowledge is power, right? Okay, so. Because you're watching this and because you're wonderful, I want to give you a coupon code for my Confident Mother Birthing course. And so if you go to mynaturalbabybirth.com slash course, in the checkout, you can put this coupon code for 10% off, YouTube10, all caps, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E 10, and you can get 10% off and you'll be on your way. And then I, in there I share everything that I know and have learned about how to have a natural baby birth confidently without a midwife, without a doula, doing it as a confident mother. Okay, remember YouTube 10 is that coupon. Hope you like this video. Give me a thumbs up or share it. Leave me a comment below or ask me a question and I'll talk to you later. Okay, have a great day, bye.